Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers, and this is Pat O. Pat O. How was your weekend? My weekend was good. Uh, it was my birthday weekend. I turned 41 on Friday. Good for you. And yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's quite the accomplishment. And um, I d- didn't have a whole lot to do because I'm still not drinking. So um, just kind of hung out with the family. But listeners of the show will be uh, happy to hear that I finally got to see moonfall a movie that i was very excited uh to see when it was out in the theater when it was released in theater earlier this year never got a chance to see because my kid never wanted to go see it and i wasn't gonna go on my own and my wife doesn't she doesn't fucking (laughs) watch that shit with me um but yeah so moonfall i saw moonfall on friday and uh it was pretty okay as far as end of the world disaster movies go um what was interesting this is it's definitely like in the same camp as like 2012 or the day after tomorrow uh but what was kind of interesting about this was that it deals with um hollow moon theory obviously and also um alien megastructures so um whenever i see stuff like that in mainstream film it's always kind of neat because as somebody that's into this stuff i'm reading about this stuff regularly anyway but to have it then be kind of like converted into a plot device for a sci-fi film. I always kind of find that interesting. Okay. So yeah, it was pretty good. Are you a big fan of like the end of the world disaster movies? Do they give you anxiety? Is it kind of like you, you kind of enjoy the morbidness of it or like, they freak the fuck out of my kid. Like he's got a real issue with them. Um, but I kind of, I'm the exact opposite. I totally get off on them. Yeah, I don't really have any type of, um, you know, existential crisis surrounding stuff like that. I, I don't know okay. why. Um, you know, I, I just don't really feel any dread. I mean, I, I've watched them. I mean, I've seen Armageddon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> You know, eh. I, I saw what is it the day after tomorrow. Um, I don't think I ever did watch that 2012 movie. I mean, what else is there? Zombie movies, I guess. Those count. Um, well, uh, Green. There's a movie Greenland that came out that I would say is kind of like one of the high water marks of the genre. Uh, that's with Daryl Butler, and um, it deals with uh, asteroids are going to hit Earth, and um, people are trying to get to Greenland because there's an underground bunker there or something that'll allow them to survive it and uh so yeah there's there's that's more of a drama you know what i mean like 2012 right. is kind of interesting the day after tomorrow is mostly just like snow like so it's like <laughs> everything's if you're afraid cold. of yeah if you're afraid of the cold then it's particularly terrifying but living in the midwest like that's like eh. right <laughs> so i mean maybe it's just the i mean independence day i guess maybe you know is, is the uh, same but you know, boy will smith my boy will smith right exactly <laughs> you know um so i mean that was you know that's a good movie I, I you know i don't know like i said it just depends on on what you consider a um into the world type of type of movie um you know I've, I've seen some of them but it's not like on the top of my to-do list when they come out i think moonfall does sound interesting um i should probably check that out so it was all right yeah you know i did well the not i forgot to mention last week's show but we keep doing these terribly long intros and that's okay i I think people like them actually for some reason you guys are fucking weird but um anyway (laughs) last the last weekend the weekend before this weekend um i watched two movies and that is let me tell you something hell must have frozen over because that does not happen um but i watched both the new scream um, oh okay which i i i enjoyed i thought it was a, yes. good, a good love letter to you know the original and to the fans and i think that they just need to fucking just end it already i mean if they don't i'm not one of those people you know if they continue to make scream movies uh, guess what i'll continue to fucking watch them i don't care how bad people say they are i'll watch it they have a release date for the next one it's like <sighs> it's like the last weekend of uh march next year they're probably gonna ha- crank them out every year now like fucking saw movies i mean i I can't I'm, I can't give a spoiler, but there's something that happens in the movie that pisses me the fuck off. But I liked it for what it was, um, you know, and that's fine. It was just like I guess a lot of people shit all over Halloween Kills, and I don't. I don't. I fucking loved that. I think that's my favorite Halloween movie. Now was Halloween Kills. I, it was fucking great. Um, 
And just like people shit all over the uh, the Child's Play reboot, Mark Hamill, I liked it a lot. So I'm not I'm not critical about that stuff. I'm easy to please, but I like the new Scream, and then I also, of course, watched the the new Jackass movie, um, <laughs> which was good. You know, it I I learned about myself when I watched it that I you know I don't like nostalgia. It makes me feel bad, and I don't really know why that is. Maybe it's because like like I know I had a fucked up childhood, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the things that that should be good and happy are just overshadowed by the stuff that wasn't. I don't know if it's because I feel like I've wasted my time. I, you know, I don't really know what it is about nostalgia, but I, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. And as funny as the new Jackass was, and it's good. Listen, if you just got some time to kill and you just want a, a laugh and watch some old men and and new young people hurt themselves, do that. Um, which I found interesting because the original crew didn't do a lot of their own stunts it was like these new guys that they're trying to like pass pass the torch to which i didn't really care about any of those people i had no connection to any of them well steve-o did the dick bees he did do the dick bees and there was some yeah there were some good stunts in it it was okay i mean i'd watch the new jackass again you know those are movies you just throw on and just kind of not pay attention to i enjoyed it for what it was Again, if they make more, and even if it's none of the original guys, I would still watch it um, because I'm just that person. But yeah, it made me feel weird about myself. (laughs) So (laughs) it was empowering to me because I'm a couple years younger than them. So to see to see Johnny Knoxville like rock the gray hair and be like still like getting chased by fucking bulls and stuff yeah like it made me like hey you know what you still fucking got it you're still dangerous even yeah. though you're over 40 um because i mean you want to talk about like you know ageism and stuff like you get to a certain age and and you kind of feel like you're uh you know you're not you're not as important or you're not as virile or you're not as strong sure. or all these other things that people feel and with women it's even worse when you talk about a woman over 50 and you, you might as well be talking about a corpse right and that's unfortunate because there's hot-ass women in their 50s and 60s and that's right i said 60s um but it's true you know and and women shouldn't be you know marginalized and kind of like their sexiness shouldn't be taken away from them just because they hit a certain age you know and it's the same thing with men, like for especially for men that like jackass, like you want to you want to feel that you're every bit as reckless and dangerous than than you as you were when you were like in your 20s. And seeing those guys do that at this age was very empowering. And I know that's not like for you, it's like a nostalgia thing. But for me, it was like, fuck, yeah, I can hang bees off my dick fucking, <laughs> with know, the best of them. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was like something I used to watch America's Got Talent a lot. And um you know, I, I don't really watch, I don't have time to watch shit like that anymore, but I used to really enjoy it. And uh, one of the competitors on there was this woman that was like fucking 80 years old that was dancing. And it was like ballroom dancing, but it was like intense ballroom dancing. And, um, you know, it made me realize that you can fucking absolutely do anything that you want to do as long as you, you just got to train your body to do it. And even though you're older, it might take a little bit more practice. You can still fucking do that shit. Like, nothing stopping you but you and so i you know i suppose that that part kind of does make me feel good but you know i also felt like i was kind of squandering my my youth a little bit maybe i should put bees on my dick and i'll feel younger i don't know <laughs> um, your giant clit <laughs> i mean no i that doesn't normally large well. fucking yeah. yeah well you know how big that thing see it through the pants that thing <laughs> jesus um, christ <laughs> i know i thought you had a boner yeah what's going on down there everybody does i know <laughs> it's, it's fine <laughs> You know, if I had the choice between banging Helen Mirren or like a twenty-four-year-old Instagram hoe, I would pick Helen Mirren. But she's you probably know? got a lot more experience. She knows what she's doing. She's got some big cans on her too. She yeah. knows what she wants. You know, mm. I mean. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, my weekend. Uh, you know, it was it was okay. I I I saw an old friend, and um, that's always very fun. See your old friends. Go visit your old friends. I don't care if you haven't talked to them in ten years. Go go see what that old friend is doing and go visit. Um, it, it was a good time. We we did a lot of we had a lot to talk about. Unlike the usual friends that you see in your life, where you know you kind of don't have anything to talk about because because you see them all the fucking time, right? Um, you know that was really fun to catch up. She is actually a long time listener of the show. I didn't Whoa. know that. I thought What's that was her name. Uh, her name's Jessica. Hey, Jesse. Yeah, she's she's no, she's good people. Um, we used to do all kinds of crazy things together, and um, you know, she's married now with two kids, and you know, but still very much uh, herself, which was great. And, you know, it was, it was a fun time. But 
Yeah, when I walked to the door, I'd never met her husband. I'd never met her children. You know, like I said, I really haven't talked. I've seen this person like almost 10 years. And um, she introduced me to her husband. She was like, oh, this is my famous friend, Asher's. And I thought that was really wholesome. <laughs> and i was like oh my god i was like i'm I'm like i'm like a z-list celebrity at best and her husband was like hey famous is famous <laughs> like, you know what i love that attitude <laughs> so <laughs> i'll take it <laughs> but anyway it was it was nice to to catch up with people like i said definitely catch up with uh you know friends we talked a lot about the weird of course um everybody's fascinated by that and uh, I'm sure we'll have more weird stories in the future. So that was interesting. But, you know, she started talking about her dad. I'm going to tell this real quick. Um, her dad, my first apartment that I ever moved out into, her dad lived there. And, like, we used to, we used to do drugs together. <laughs> like, okay. You, used to, you moved in with her dad? I didn't move in with her dad. We lived in the same apartment complex. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Right. And so, like, you know, we, would, we wouldn't do, like, crazy drugs. We'd, like, smoke pot or whatever. I think, like, mm. one time we had a party and, like, somebody was outside puking off my balcony. And her, her dad shows up and, like, gives the, the puking person a beer and was like, this will help. You know, so we used to kind of party together. So I live in an apartment now. And like her and I are just, she was like, oh yeah. She was like, my dad, you know, he, she's living in her dad's old house. Him and his wife moved into an apartment. And she's like, yeah, he's living over on, uh, you know, she was like, well, kind of by where you live at now. And I was like, oh, really? You know, where? What street? Her fucking dad lives on my street again. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, I just can't like get away from your dad. Maybe I should go party with him. I don't know. Um, so that was, that was kind of just, you know, funny coincidence. I, I got no desire to do drugs with the man again, but hey, the offer's there, I guess. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that was my weekend. So not too exciting. A um, couple of things that I did, though. Um, I did go on to a show called Paranormal Patio. And uh, admittedly, you know, when I do this a lot, um, I don't listen to the shows that I get invited to go on. And I probably should, right? I've, I've gotten really lucky so far and I've been on some really great shows, but <laughs> who knows what I'm walking into. Um, so I go on this Paranormal Patio show and it was it was good. It was It's a really good episode. You guys should definitely go check it out. We talked about everything. I mean, everything. But we also experienced a synchronicity in real time. And, and again, I think you should just go listen to the episode to figure out what that synchronicity is. Uh, but cool guy very cool show should be listening to it um of course if you're not listening to monster radio well why not i mean it's we got four i think four episodes now over there um we're getting ready to come up with the fifth episode which is going to be about the jersey devil if you guys liked hearing us talk about the jersey devil over here then go listen to me and ryan talk about the jersey devil over there on monster radio um that'll come out this week um what else nothing else really for me to for me to push and promote um anyway i guess i'll get on to the news does that sound good sure so uh <clears throat> big news for the nessie fans out there there has been uh yet another Loch Ness monster sighting the first one of the year in mm. fact um which happened on okay so I, i'll start with this on may on march 23rd there was supposedly the first nessie sighting that happened um, somebody was watching the Nessie live cam from the Loch Ness Monster Sightings.com website. I'll post it down below, of course. It's a great resource. And they thought that they had seen some weird things in the water. Initially, the, the sighting registry had registered it as a legit sighting, but has since removed it, saying that they think that what was actually seen were a couple of wakes made by by boats. So they they so you know that this website they do investigate their their purported sightings and they only put stuff up that they think are legitimate sightings so they did remove that one um which i i think is really um you know responsible of them to do but they did record this one so on march 30th um a couple of filmmakers were down at the lock um making a documentary about the weird happenings there and they allegedly saw nessie they believe to be nessie i guess um you know uh chilling with the water there in the early morning so you know i don't know um it poses a lot of really interesting interesting theories um did they really see nessie and if they did why didn't they catch it on camera i don't know they just acted like oh we were too late i think there's pictures yeah they posted pictures yeah um which you know just look like any other nessie pictures just something in the water that you can't identify really um just looking at it you know who knows what it was could have been fish could have been could have been nessie um but it is now an, an official sighting it's the first official sighting of the year and it's 
you know, the first one in uh, 2022. So somebody had originally brought the first one to my attention, the March 23rd one. And, um, you know, we kind of started talking about how 2021 was a record breaking year in sightings. We know we, we've tracked it on the show here. Mm-hmm. Um, so then what happened? Why were the sightings? Why did the sightings just all of a sudden stop? Um, and we hadn't had any more. Well, you know, to be honest with you, I think that it falls in a line with if this thing is real, then clearly it has some type of migratory pattern. It's been cold in those waters. Maybe now sightings are going to start picking back up now that it's starting to warm up outside. Um, I'm really interested to kind of track that and see what happens. I don't know. Pat, what do you think? Uh, I'm glad we're still talking about Nessie. I mean, at least there's, um, you know, the whole Nessie thing reminds me of something that my friend Janine told me that, um, she likes dating guys with facial tattoos because she feels like they won't have a fear of commitment. And the Nessie thing kind of reminds me of that. Like there's a whole bunch of, you know, okay evidence, like it, it, we keep having sightings and we have all this stuff there. But is any of it really worth anything? <laughs> yeah, there's correlation, you know? causation. Yeah, sure, I get it. It's like you could say Nessie is like probably one of the most well documented, or you know, like just kind of like there's all this stuff for this one specific, potentially even the same creature. Like no one's saying, everyone's willing to concede that there's multiple Bigfoots running around out there, right? No one thinks sure. there's just a fucking Bigfoot. But people think that Nessie is Nessie, right? It's one specific creature that there's been a whole lot of pictures and a whole lot of evidence and a whole lot of effort putting into documenting. And you think that after all of that, that it would amount to something and it really still hasn't. And that's why like, I make the facial tattoo comparison. Like, hey, just because someone has some shit written on their face in ink doesn't mean they're not afraid of commitment. Uh Oh, I don't know. It's <laughs> I saw those pictures on Tobias's website. That's where I came across the story, Singular Fourteen, and um, it was all right. I mean, I don't know, just some shit in the water. Yeah, some shit in the water. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's what it always is. It's some shit in the water. If it was anything more, we wouldn't be talking about it. We'd be we'd be all listening to them talk about it on ABC News or whatever. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what I agree gonna, with what that. What are you going to do? You know, um, but I don't. I, I I'm glad we have cameras on that, but I think the fact that we have cameras on there because it's like webcams that are set up like 24 oh, seven streaming, yeah. right? Dude, if there was anything there, we'd be caught up by now. Well, you know what I mean, people, th- people say that they have. It's just it's not coming up out of the water. And I mean, realistically, if, it just depends on what you think Nessie is. If it's a plesiosaur, it doesn't have the physical structure of the neck to be able to hold its head out of the water like that it's not possible it can kind of float on the surface but it can't look like the the, the surgeon's photograph is what science says allegedly what, what what we know now about plesiosaurs is that they can't do that um you know so i mean just because it hasn't completely came out of the water yet but again my favorite stories are like the nessie coming out of the water and walking across the street and shit i love that um and we haven't seen that on these webcams so i don't know you know again we'll just keep watching i mean what choice do we have right i mean we'll just continue to to see what it might be um Mm -hmm. you know of course there's the nessie eel theory and it could just be a a large species of eel which is why we don't actually see it you know break the water like that um which would be cool and and if they exist i think that they have migratory patterns and they (laughs) they only come to the lock when the water's warmer so (laughs) you know i i like the idea that she's the ghost of a dinosaur you like that one that's my new thing now because that was like something they mentioned on hellier was the uh that that sasquatches were ghosts of cavemen or some shit like oh my god that's a i never fucking thought of that ryan fucking told me that they're called phantomals and i told him to shut the fuck up (laughs) (laughs) i mean i know it's a real term and i i get it i get what people are saying but okay you know that's disrespectful that you would talk to him like that you're right that's i'm gonna stick up for him (laughs) ryan i got your back she needs to keep her fucking italian mouth shut (laughs) See, I, always talk about it. I don't know why people think i'm mean or intimidating i'm so <laughs> nice <laughs> oh my god run in your fucking mouth i did i was so pissed off i was like no no don't fucking say fans to me ever again <laughs> i can imagine you talking with your hands i want the listeners out there for the rest of the show this is a thought experiment for the rest of the show i want you to imagine asher's talking with her hands when she says everything <laughs> Just wait till we, yeah, wait till we get on camera, then everybody will see it. I'm like, oh, she really is Italian. Okay, she does that like eh, 
with the fucking. <laughs> I'm making the gesture right now. You know what I'm talking about? You know what gesture I'm making? Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's the same one you're making, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the same one. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking little hand, like, hey. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the, that's the Nessie sighting that happened recently. Um, will there be more? Probably. And will we talk about it? Of course we will. Uh, yes. That's what we do here. Another uh, notable newsworthy, I guess, Um a blast from the past happened. Uh, a a mystery corpse washed up on the beach of uh, Queensland, somewhere in, in Queensland. That's in Australia, if you don't know. And uh, a lot of people were comparing this thing to a um, like a reptilian type of corpse with a really long, weird tail. And uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was the same thing as the uh, that. The Montauk Monster. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And if people don't know, the Montauk Monster happened back, I think it was 2007. That was like when no. I was. Yes, it was, sir. Yes, it was, because I was a teenager and that I wanted to be a cryptozoologist and I never thought I would be, and here I am. Um, so, <laughs> anyway. Oh, you keep talking. I got to Google that because I could have swore that happened when I was in height, maybe in my dimension. And you're in your, your timeline. Bef- before the fucking split happened. Are you having a... July 20... Oh, my God. July 2008? No way. Ooh, I was so close. That was good. Um, yeah, 2008, I guess. See, I was right. Kind of. Um, but anyway, it was very... This this new corpse, very reminiscent of the Montauk monster. If you haven't Googled it, um, trigger warning, I guess, if you don't like bloated animal corpses, um, you know, look it up. Weird fucking creature washed up on the beach in New York. Um you know people thought that it could have been like an experimented on animal because of the um the laboratory there on montauk island or whatever dude i gotta cause i gotta call mandela effect audible on this right now there is no fucking way this happened in 2008 i'm telling you it did i would have been 27 years old no 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 i've known about that since forever because montauk was supposedly where they were using portal technology and bigfoot came through or some shit like they were trying to there's a whole that base that there's a there's an island that's a um military installation out there right and that's what they think the thing escaped from and washed on shore on the like on the on the civilian side of the beach the military the installations side. i mean all all of that has been around that's been a story for way longer than the creature that washed washed up on the beach right and supposedly that's where they were working on time travel and they opened they were trying to fuck around with time travel and they opened up a portal and like monsters came through and shit and they had to fight it i this I gotta look into that. I swear to God, I thought this. I've known about this for longer, but I now that I think about it, I don't know how much earlier it could have been because then there was no internet. You know what I mean? Well, like, that's true. There really was no internet before two thousand two thousand one. I saw not where you, Yeah, I mean there was, but not not like it is. You know, like it was even then. Actually, like, internet in two thousand eight was different than it is now. Um, I, I saw the Montauk monster story break on Crypto Mundo. Like I said, I woke up and checked it every fucking day of my every day of my life. And uh, the woman who took the pictures of it did not gather. She said that like a weird government entity, which is kind of fitting for the show, came and gathered right. the corpse. So then she that she couldn't. Um, but a lot of people kind of landed on it's. It was probably just a raccoon, right? And <clears throat> just because of the bone structure and things like that. So. This new creature that washed up, you know, very reminiscent of the Montauk monster. The skull does look very weird. Um, you know, I kind of called it. I called it firsthand as soon as I saw it. Um, somebody tagged me in a post about it. I said, that's a possum. Not an opossum, but a, but a possum, an Australian possum. And uh, they're different. And just because, you know, I'm, I know about skulls sometimes because I'm that person. And uh, anyway, <laughs> so then I, I was like, let me go look it up real quick. Because it does look weird. The skull looks very weird and reptile like um but yeah when you look up a possum skull and and compare it to that corpse it's i mean it's a dead on match so now articles are going going around saying that it's it's just a possum guys uh the tail the long tail and the skull really give it away and it probably is just a possum but of course another you know this was just caught by some instagrammer who took a picture of it posted it and was like is this an alien like no it's, it's it's dead possum dead bloated waterlogged possum is what it is um right. you know with, with some decay you know and that's probably all but you know i, I think people like i said so I, several people have tagged me in, in the, this article and you know i'm sure you guys want to hear the hot take here yourself now of course there's no dna evidence gathered from it so who knows could be an alien dressed as a possum but yeah, they're known to do that from time to time they do that yeah i mean they like to dress up and play possum or raccoon or whatever and wash up on our beaches because they got nothing better to do 
I don't know. Um, but that's my take on it. So, Pat, what do you think? You, you got any takes on what it might be? No, I'm not a uh, zoologist, crypto, or otherwise. So I don't, I don't fucking know. I know they got weird shit down in Australia. You know what it is most definitely? Without what? a doubt, it's a corpse. <laughs> Without a doubt. I, my, my head's still spinning about the Montauk monster because <laughs> I could it Because if, if for me, it's just so weird. It's just, that's so weird to me. I don't know. Call the hell your people. <laughs> Maybe we'll do uh, the Montauk Island. I put it on the list for ideas in this conversation. Yeah, because that'd be a fun one to do. Yeah. People talk about that one. You know, why not? Um, okay. Well, so should we get into tonight's topic? Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited. I've been so excited about this because um, this is a, a good one. Um, <clears throat> this is one that is very near and dear to me because of all of my research, of course. Um, but... We're going to talk about the Men in Black. Pat, before, um, wow, two Will Smith movies in one episode, I just realized. Um, very, very cool. But before this episode, Pat, did you really know much about the Men in Black? Did you have to do oh, yeah. research? Okay, good. good. Yeah, it was kind of, uh, um, they've been an integral part of the UFO phenomena since as long as I've been following it. I'm sure there was a sightings episode about it. Um, where exactly I first... Where exactly I first got exposed to them, I do not know. And and it's interesting because in doing my uh, the research for this week's topic, alongside the book that I was reading, um, The Complete Secret Cipher of the UFO Knots by Alan Greenfield, which is something that I picked up because of Hellier. I actually, the one good thing to come, come out of me watching scenes in one was I made a list of all the books that they mentioned, and I, I picked up a couple of them. I'm starting to make my way through them. Um, is that I kind of the different theories about the men in black. And I'm sure we'll get to that in, you know, in due time. But oh, yeah. um, my kind of default perception was that they were, um, they were more terrestrial. Okay. And that they were just a branch of like the CIA or something that was, sure. you know what I mean? And there's, there's actually more supernatural or I guess, uh, you know, uh, uh, like non-terrestrial explanations for them sure and uh, there's actually a lot <laughs> yeah. there's a, you know so that'll be interesting but yeah that was kind of my at what i thought of at first one of my favorite um x-files episodes are you have you seen the whole series or are you just kind of like tangently familiar with them i know it's kind of like before your time yeah i mean i'm kind of i mean i don't you know like i said i've seen episodes but one of my favorite X Files episodes. It's a it's a non mythos episode, but it has to do with um, the Men in Black, and it stars Alex Trebek. Yes, Alex Trebek and Jesse the Body Ventura as Men in Black, and it's it's a, a played for laughs episode. It's very jokey, and but has some great. Oh, it has it really has some some great explanations and theories about the ufo phenomenon and whether or not they're it's just the whole thing you gotta it, it, you gotta track it down just just check out like alex trebek x files and it'll tell you the episode and and the season and episode number and all that stuff and then whatever streaming service is, is hosting it watch it it's 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 groundbreaking it's hysterical and it's very very thought-provoking um i don't know why i just did that whole thing <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna start over for people. Okay, that, I'm sorry, I fucked up your. No, I know this okay. is important to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have sent you my notes, maybe. Um, but you know, for people that don't know who the Men in Black are, for whatever reason, basically, basically, um, they are a a an organization, a group of individuals, whether terrestrial or not, that go around um and make contact with people who have experienced uh particularly <laughs> ufological um experiences and silence them like for whatever reason that that seems to be their main mission um and we'll kind of get into you know all of this now the men in black have been called the question because their origin story kind of seems suspicious and has been um put down as a hoax forever um so the first uh the first real men in black report came from uh 1947 actually um where this fella by the name of harold Dahl um said he i guess he was some he was a sailor or something and he was on his um his boat patrolling this area 
um it's called um the uh, what is it maury island incident if you want to look more into it mm-hmm. i'm not going to go into too much detail but he's on his boat and he sees these six donut shaped craft and one of the craft starts like puking all over him or something <laughs> um <laughs> it starts like exploding stuff right. everywhere killed his dog it killed his dog it <laughs> injured his son right with yeah. its supersonic extraterrestrial puke and mm. you know so of course he was he was very freaked out um and he took some of the debris because it had landed on his boat and and took it to his employer and was like uh hey my guy something this is weird i don't know what this is but it's weird his, his employer a man by fred uh by the name of fred chrisman um ended up taking it and started talking to a um like a ufo sci-fi writer journalist guy uh by the name of, of ray palmer which again you can look up he's got a whole history of shit yes of uh fate magazine and uh the shaver the, the uh yeah the hollow earth stuff which i have always wanted to talk about too but yes right and so you know he takes it over to him and uh ray calls in another guy by the name of, of kenneth arnold and they both look at the debris and they're like eh, this is kind of this doesn't seem as fantastical as you guys made it sound um you know so in the meantime doll claims that he was visited by a couple of, of men in black suits and had threatened him um and told him to not talk about this incident and he had also photographed um he had pictures of the craft and he said that the men altered the photograph so that he couldn't share it with anybody but i did you see an explanation of how they did that or like no because that's i read that online too that they altered the photographs but i was like wait a minute like like he had the pictures in his hand and they touched it and the picture changed or you know i guess he didn't really i'm just i'm sure there's detail about that out there somewhere um but i didn't didn't find any any that was readily available but he just said that they altered he said what he said was they fogged his photograph so Mm. it definitely sounds like it was some type of supernatural it wasn't like they took a marker and just colored over it you know what i mean (laughs) like it it was something that happened uh in some type of metaphysical way Mm. um so then you know like i said back to back to palmer and, and arnold um they contact the army and they go hey you guys um check out this debris that this guy this guy got from allegedly this ufo encounter and they're like "Mm, you know it doesn't look great but yeah we'll take it this is where it gets fucking weird because these two army men on their way back to san francisco they're in tacoma washington on the way back to san francisco their fucking plane crashed and they died and you know allegedly the the debris with it but at that point the fbi got involved and was where they were investigating the matter and when they went to doll to ask him about it he said no i made it up it was all fake so they kind of they ended up classifying that incident as a hoax and they said that the plane crashed due to some type of engine failure however years later doll came back out and said no it wasn't fake i just got scared because those men threatened me things got weird you know and, and i recanted my story so still kind of up in the air but again this is just the very condensed version of of that (laughs) incident this is a whole rabbit hole that maybe we'll talk about on its own episode but anyway pat thoughts on that topic on that incident yeah that's one of the uh more famous ones if you look on there was a movie it's part of project blue book um and there was a movie came out that came out called project blue book that um dramatized some of the cases in there and that's one of them so that they actually hollywood did like a a, a reenactment of that which is worth checking out um because the whole thing in other ties what's his name um i believe ray palmer was the one that you know he was studying ufos because he had his own encounter and that's where the term flying saucer had come from right and so i mean you know and then also of course the first encounter with the men in black so you know it, it's a big story i mean there's a lot to it um but that's just kind of for time there's a lot there's a lot to it but there's something interesting that like i there there's a shift that happens about this time and with i'd say within a 20 year span right between when this stuff starts happening and the betty and barney hill era right from there forward where you see aliens 
kind of go from being people or spacemen and to being just like grays. Okay. And the men in black kind of bridge that, right? So, like, if you look at like alien, like, like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, right? Like, 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 like one on one, like you know, face to face contact with an extraterrestrial being. If we believe that the men in black are otherworldly, and we'll just put it like that for now, ultra terrestrial, whatever, then this is interesting because this has them walking and talking and interacting with us in broad daylight, right? And that's something that you kind of saw back in the day when you had spacemen with names, when aliens had names, right? Like Injured Cole, like Valiant Thor, right? Like people like that were like, oh, I met a spaceman, and this is what his name was, and this is where he was from, right? And kind of what things shift to at some point, because I don't feel like Men in Black are a thing anymore. Like, oh, are there are. are they? Are people are still getting sightings and, oh, yeah. and still getting we'll encounters talk, with we'll them. Talk about them, but yeah, yeah, because I feel like that was it, it's something that kind of was like a thing for a period, and was kind you know, but kind of became less of one, like. I always wondered, like, so if these things are, if, if it's a government, logically, you'd almost want to say that they were a government agency, because that's why they show up so sporadically. If these things were tied with every time there was a UFO sighting and they're trying to silence a witness, then there'd be as many men in black sightings as there are UAP sightings. And there's not right so how many how many yeah. people report ufo sightings and then have a follow-up encounter with the men in black if you were to and i don't know what that number is percentage wise but it's got to be really small two percent five percent maybe you know we're not there yet so you just talk you just talk and i will i let me know don't 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 just talk i'm gonna be quiet now i'm sorry <laughs> no you, you get ahead of yourself let's i keep let's, fucking this up i know this is important to you i keep fucking first. this up let's i'm so enthusiastic then we'll, right. we'll then we'll theorize right and we'll 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 break it apart all right let's, okay all right but let's uh throw it all on the table okay so, all right all right so there was that incident right so I'll, I'll tell you a couple a couple of other notable things about that incident that incident predates the roswell crash by one month almost exactly mm -hmm. it also um predates when men in black were popularized which would have been which of course you guys are gonna love the mothman flap of 1966 to 67 um so by 20 years right it wasn't really a popular term until 20 years later um but but we'll get there another really notable and, and again these aren't I, I can't be even begin to scratch the surface of all of the men in black encounters that have been out there but i really wanted to to give you guys the ones that i feel like held the most water and had a very interesting history and that you could p potentially look into yourself um so the next one that, that i thought was interesting was uh what is that noise do you hear that no what do you hear you didn't hear that no that's so weird i wonder if that'll pop up on the recording it was weird uh, anyway what'd you, what'd you hear <laughs> it was like i don't know what it was it was weird it was like a weird static for a minute <laughs> okay well anyway <laughs> i'll continue um so the next one is is about a guy named uh albert bender and uh he is a very notable part again in, in ufological um studies um he actually founded the international flying saucer bureau um back in i believe it was 1952 i didn't really you know include too many dates again i'm, I'm sharing cliff notes versions of these things um so um albert bender when he made this group he ended up which had actually um heavy hitters in, in the community like gray barker which i'm sure a lot of you have heard of um if you don't what are you doing listening to the show you need to read some books um but anyway um before he had had any super weird encounters um he started experiencing really weird mystery illnesses um he said that he was actually getting telepathic messages and, and th that were threats um, he was receiving strange phone calls. Um, remember those strange phone calls because they'll come back again. Um, and then in November of 1952, he was actually, he was leaving the theater. And when he walked out of the theater, he noticed an individual staring at him wearing all black clothing. But the individual had glowing eyes. And the guy kind of 
followed him home and and he just went home and nothing really happened um, but then in july 1953 he was explicitly visited by three men um, who commuted communicated with him pe- telepathically and told him to stop publishing his work um, with his organization the international flying saucer bureau um, he was saying that he had a groundbreaking document that he was going to publish with the newsletter that came along if you remember the group and so he got visited by these three men they said you're not going to publish publish this and they actually there's that noise again that's so weird so where did he where did he make the um where did he make the uh claim that he was good or where did he say that he was going to publish he, so he's going to publish something in his newsletter yeah. but where did he say that he was going to publish something in his newsletter well publicly i mean he'd go on like talks they'd have meetings things like that i mean it's not like he was he also seemed to have kind of like an oddities museum it was just his home and like he he, he was like obsessed with like oddities and curiosities um you know shrunken heads and things like that um and so he you know people would come and like tour his his home and and things so he talked to a lot of people he was a very social person um so i'm not sure where exactly he was maintaining this i mean people would write articles about him and then that news would spread and and whatnot he'd be like hey join this group because i post this this newsletter called the space review and i'm going to share this groundbreaking article and you know about about ufos and aliens and we know what they are and here's what it is so the the three men show up they tell him don't publish it they actually take his paper and don't let him publish it <clears throat> and uh at that point in time very shortly after he actually ended up closing the international flying saucer bureau which was weird because it's not like it, this was not a notable group i think at one point in time he had like 600 members or something like that i mean it was big it was a big, it was a big organization um but he closed down the bureau um and he did put out a final newsletter and you know what he ended up saying um in that final newsletter was you know i'll read it out um at the back end of it he said the mystery of the flying saucers is no longer a mystery the source is already known but any information about this is being withheld by orders from a higher source we would like to print the full story in space review but because of the nature of the information we've been advised in the negative we advise those engaged in saucer work to be very cautious so that was kind of what everybody knew at the time and again this was from 1952 to 1953 um bender did eventually write his own book about that entire situation um it's called flying saucers and the three men and he does make some really wild claims about these men in black he talks about how they you know they they spoke again spoke telepathically they had these glowing eyes they could levitate um and and various other incidences so again cliff notes if you guys want to hear more about that just go look up the guy go read his book um he did put it out there so anyway that's the story of albert bender and and his journey with the men in black he was pretty much silenced out of this information so he says it's interesting in a lot of these stories just i'll call it now you'll see there'll always be three of them that's that's another reoccurring thing that I didn't yeah, pick yeah. up on right away, but that that kind of presented itself through my research is that, you know, yes, of course they're all black, and sometimes they drive cars from different periods of time and blah blah blah. But the number three that they pop up and 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 numbers of three. So. Oh yeah, almost always, almost always. You know, what was it that you know Bender? Maybe he was biting off more than he can chew. Maybe he just was drumming up this big groundbreaking paper that he was going to publish that was released from the government and maybe he didn't have anything at all and this was his way of pulling out could be don't pull out don't pull out no you should probably say so you you probably should pull out i'm a very big uh supporter of pulling out (laughs) (laughs) um but you know so there's that there's there's the albert albert bender story but there's more not 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 to his story we're pretty much done there uh, another big one that I wanted to bring up was, of course, John Keel, um, because even though it was it was Gray Barker who actually coined the term Men in Black, it was John Keel that made the Men in Black popular. Um, so John Keel shows up in in West Virginia. Um, actually, John Keel went to Point Pleasant, not in Point Pleasant, but he went to West Virginia to study in the injured cold story keel was a journalist in new york and he ends up going to study injured because he'd heard about that to the grapevine while he's there in west virginia he hears about the scarberry mallet mothman sighting which i've told, told plenty of times on the show 
um you know and then so the mothman stuff kind of started happening and keel stayed for a while in west virginia to study the mothman stuff hence the mothman prophecies um but john keel himself had had multiple encounters with the men in black and he acknowledges that he had multiple encounters and and in the way of like being followed by strange black cars um the strange phone calls just like bender was getting constant all hours of the night um he actually was a victim to there are reports of like men in black photographers who just go around taking pictures of people or like their properties and and just kind of leave and don't really say anything um stalking people just to take their pictures and things and then like i said leaving um so you know keel was a victim of that so he you know understood that this was happening oh and he would get reports from people somebody would call and say hey i saw the mothman and i reported it to you and now the men in black showed up at my house and they're here now keel would rush over there i mean he would actively try to chase these people to talk to them keel was i'll, I'll give you that much keel was a storyteller and an embellisher but he fucking put the legwork in like he would jump in the car at all hours of the night go try to track these dudes down and he did that shit all the time with all of his research so good for him um and he'd never caught him of course he never caught up to him and uh but keel also noted on very honestly that there were people in point pleasant that that thought that john keel himself was a men in black and that you know so he could see how with all this talk of the mothman sightings happening how a lot of people that were reporting these men in black sightings or encounters could be mistaken identity for just regular people trying to report on the on the happenings um but he did think that they were very real um also notable for the mothman time and, and my favorite <laughs> my favorite mothman encounter and man and men in black story in one is a lady by the name of connie carpenter who in november of 1966 the very beginning of the mothman sightings um saw the mothman who was kind of actually this almost the same thing as the scarberry mallet incident she was driving and the mothman was beside her car she is one of the very few people that actually saw the mothman's face and the only way that she really described his face was that it was that it was horrible she's never actually recanted the details of it but there's kind of a reason for that uh, because a few months later um in february of 1967 she was walking and she was an 18 year old girl you know I'll say that much she was young she wasn't some old lady she was walking to school and a gentleman of men in black was standing outside of a black cadillac and kind of motioned her over and she, you know she thought maybe he was just somebody that was lost needed directions or whatever and he tried to kidnap her tried to force her into the car and she struggled with them she got away and she ran back home and the person had followed her they had pursued her and stuck a note under the door and was like you know I, it was something threatening like i'll still get you my pretty or something like that you know and um connie carpenter never spoke publicly ever again about the mothman or the men in black or any of it never again won't would not would not come out and talk about it her husband has come out and kind of you know he's kind of talked about her and he's kind of told her story there was like a big documentary that was made and she refused to take part but her husband participated and he just said <laughs> she's never she's never been the same she doesn't leave the house she won't go out go out at night wow um, it's very traumatizing her so you know that's a very interesting you know could, maybe it wasn't the men in black maybe it was just some dudes trying to kidnap her who knows and she happened to see the boss man you know i don't know yeah. yeah i mean not not to get into conjecture just yet but i think there might be multiple explanations for some of this stuff i don't think you can find one unified theory that that sums up every case you know what i mean oh absolutely you know i agree and, and we're we're almost there one more notable sighting i wanted to mention you asked if there were recent sightings yeah sir um dan Aykroyd. oh i wondered if you're gonna get to this one of course okay dan Aykroyd. he uh he was making a show about aliens or something i don't even remember exactly and he walked out, called out there for sci-fi channel okay he was the producer and the narrator okay okay and he uh stepped outside to take a phone call Do you know from who from britney spears yes <laughs> and so 100 percent medically accurate that's absolutely right <laughs> medically accurate so he walks outside and there's a, a dude standing at the black forward i think he said and all in all black that I don't think he said anything to him. I think he just kind of watched him, didn't he? I don't think he said anything. Yeah, they didn't talk. And then he went inside, and 
his show was mysteriously canceled i guess maybe right then and there i don't or a couple days later two hours later yeah they got the phone call to stop shooting they had already filmed uh you know it was like an eight episode season and they had already filmed like five of the episodes or something like that Mm -hmm. and uh they got the phone call from the network that the show had been canceled and stopped filming and not only that but um they they had a sizable amount of it already done and none of that stuff has been seen either it just completely disappeared yeah yeah so and you know and dan Aykroyd's a big uh he's huge um you know in in the ufo community like that's his yes. thing. i'd like to get him on the show so if you guys can like tweet at him or whatever and tell him that he should come on the show and like we should make this happen and, and get dan Aykroyd on to talk about his encounter and his information and <laughs> what he knows <laughs> that'd be sweet um but anyway um you know that's that's a big one and i know i i know you want to talk about um what is his name tom Tom De- is it the long or the De- longe how do you say his fucking name the long i didn't know he had a men in black sighting i'm almost positive he had a men in black sighting but i haven't like he's got like a book and shit doesn't he i don't know i've never really dug into him like that um you know I, I i'm very aware of his presence um i was a kid and you know i was a teenager in the early 2000s of course i listened to blink 182 but um you know and, and i've been there i think we'll talk about him and we'll talk about people like Aykroyd um uh, in a little more detail in another episode but I'm pretty sure he did have a men in black sighting too or encounter um I have put him into this stuff I have a, a a random um men in black story that I'd like to share real quick sure All right, so this was um I was on YouTube and I was going down a YouTube hole and uh this is the comment from one of the videos that I was watching, and this sounds like a legit story, and it was by Matthew Don. I don't know if that's their Christian name or if that's some alias that they use, M-A-T-H-Y space D-O-N, Don, Matthew Don. But on one of these YouTube videos that I was watching, I just happened to go through the comment section, and here is this person sharing this story that's a story that was told to them, and I... I believe that this story was shared with them i don't think this was made up so uh here's the story when i was a kid my eye doctor randomly told me a story about his parents or his aunt and uncle seeing an airplane crash the next day some men from the government came to talk to them about it the plane was small and moving fast so they figured it was a navy jet they figured it was a navy jet that had a training accident or something there were three visitors at their door soon after One of the government men had sunglasses, and his mom said his eyes were strange and elongated, although not like an oriental. His words, sorry, it was the 1980s sigh. So he said his parents offered the men some coffee slash tea and some desserts like cake or pudding. She handed the guy with the sunglasses a spoon to eat with, and he held it and rotated around like he didn't know what it was. The government men asked them some questions, but both of them couldn't remember the specifics of the questions, and his And soon after the men left, both his parents couldn't remember the details of the crash they saw. My doctor said his parents described it like the way the memory of a dream melts away as you wake up and the details that seem so vivid when you first wake up fade away and you're just left with a general sense of the dream. They remembered a few key posts and a sense of the details of the crash and the government men who visited them, but for both of them, it it then became a blur. I think the point my doctor was trying to make was about always asking authority figures for their credentials because he made the point that his parents just assumed the men were from the government and invited them in. They never asked for identification and never saw any insignia. So who knows who they were? So this sounds like a real story to me. And I'll tell you why, because it's at least maybe this eye doctor was fucking with this kid, but the, the way that they wrote this seems very conversational and it just seems like it was related as they were told it and they remember it. Right. Um, but using this as a launching point, like obviously by talking about the eyes and the fact that the guy didn't know how to use a spoon or whatever. Yeah. He's suggesting that there's something not right with this, right. That they're, yeah. that they're otherworldly. They're not human. Okay. Which kind of piggies back to the the point I made earlier, since now we're going to try to dissect all this stuff. If these are not government agency, if this is not terrestrial, if these are not humans, and there's some ultra-terrestrial explanation, 
why do they pick and choose where they materialize and harass witnesses? Because they don't do it to everybody. Well, I, I, I want to I wanna circle back for a second. On ah, the I keep story. dodging the fucking question. All right. I'm not. We're going to get into it. We're just not there yet. There's so okay. much about this that I want to share with people. And I'm, I'm very excited about this episode, to be honest with you. My nipples are so hard. <laughs> and my clit is just raging. And gorged. <laughs> just fucking the size of a cigarette lighter. But anyway, um, I want to mention that you're, you're talking about, you know, them trying to eat and, and doing weird things. That is one thing people report a lot about right. these things is that they don't know how to do normal things. Um, you know, a lady, one lady offered them jello. They didn't really know how to eat it. Um, they don't really know how to use utensils. When they did swallow things, um, like, for example, somebody offered them a steak and they didn't chew it. They just fucking swallowed it like a pelican. And, uh, you know, <laughs> or, or Dan Aykroyd's car. You know that which was the the car that he spotted uh the, the his men in black driving was like this old Cadillac or something right it was it was a car from out of time, which I had my own experience with you know right. I, I've told that story a bunch of times about finding that thing in the woods yeah yeah, yeah. so I mean that excuse me that kind of makes sense it suggests that they're using screening memories or they're they're just trying to like cover like psychically project a cover story or you know something like that and they're not quite getting it right um that yeah it's, some, it's, some, it's something coming into our reality that's trying to disguise itself as something that it thinks will blend in and it's getting it about three-fourths right and said um when we went to the erie pennsylvania event she she was doing her makeup and she like fucked up her makeup severely and we're dressed like the men in black and she's like whatever she was like this is a real men in black costume they don't know how to do fucking makeup <laughs> <laughs> i'm so right. proud of her <laughs> and right. everybody if you don't know who ann is that's my that's my that's my research that's the brains behind everything really um but <laughs> anyway i was like oh my god she knows the men in black are fucking weird um anyway yeah i mean they just seem very out of place i'll mention that the some people report seeing them in a black Volkswagen, which is interesting because of their ties to the the Point Pleasant area and the Mothman sightings and and back to Indrid Cold because Indrid and the gang were said to drive a black Volkswagen. Mm. It was actually an integral, yeah, big integral part of the story, um, which I have no idea why I've never asked Tanya about it, but I will. I mean, I'll ask her. Hey, did I tell you that? she messages me on Facebook now? Yeah, we talked about that okay she's she's been very social lately good for her. she's very good nice for you tanya i'm very glad that you're you're you feel comfortable in this community and you guys absolutely should welcome this woman with with open arms um and me message me on facebook i like it, I like it message pat it. o <laughs> talk to him he he yes. he needs he has starved for attention <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> just, no be nice idea. just we like to talk to you guys believe it or not even though it doesn't seem like it for me on facebook i, I like to talk about this stuff and i like to talk to right. you guys and i like to hear from you um but anyway um so you know that was just another interesting thing before we get into what i know exactly what you want to get into i think i encountered a man in black okay i think i did and i've told I, I believe i'm almost positive i've told this story here if not i've told it on other shows before um so i've i've shared my ufo story um how i saw my first ufo i was 18 i was outside smoking at three o'clock in the morning looked like giant headlights scared me to death um maybe about two maybe within two years later i came upon a post on craigslist it was allegedly a film student working on a film about ufos he was oh that's people. right he was yeah. looking for people that had ufo stories so i went we sat down at a coffee shop i went with my husband the guy was very plain can't remember any detail about him but i told him my story that's fine right people you know i i live in in dayton ohio we got a big film school here um right state university is a big film school and um you know that's believable that's a believable story except for probably about another three years later i'm on craigslist again because i didn't learn my lesson the first time and i see the same exact fucking post now granted it's not like i had the previous post saved anywhere right i didn't have it for verbatim what was said but it was the same fucking scenario i'm a film student at wright state university i'm making a movie about ufo encounters i'm looking for people with encounters and it's just i mean and that's it really that's where the story ends now was this a, a men in black i don't know was this a guy maybe putting on a front that he was a film student because he didn't want to look weird interviewing people about their ufo and maybe he was making a ufo documentary 
you know, I, I really to this day still don't know, but I, I, it's hard to really come up with a good explanation. I've never found the documentary. Um, so I, maybe he never finished it. You know, who knows? It was just very weird. But in modern times, in the modern day, I'll, I'll notate this. Not all of the men in black sightings were actually men wearing old timey black suits. Some of them described them as wearing very regular people clothes, you know, and if their job is to kind of blend into society, then maybe they're just getting better at their job. Um, in the Bible, they're wearing robes. In the, what, is that, okay, is that, is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my notes are on you don't have you don't have biblical stories concerning men in black as as part oh. of your notes for this week no i did not i did not include that but thank oh, you i go i go way back i go way i go pre-1940 I'm, I'm glad that you that you included that. um you know that uh, you know uh, alan greenfield everybody he's an interesting he's an interesting character um but yeah i mean you know so let's talk about it some more let's let, let's continue pat okay you are very curious as to why they're picking and choosing and we're not having a whole outbreak of, of men in black sightings, right? That was just so when I was trying to if, if you look at this from the top down, the, the first schism that you get within the men in black phenomenon is are they are they FBI or right. are they are they human or not? Work? Yes. OK, perfect. Right. This is a great way to summarize it. And if you agree that they're human. One of the things that I think lends credence to that tree of thought is is the fact that we don't see a visit from the men in black associated with every single UAP sighting. There's only some of the bigger ones or one where there's debris retrieved, right, or, or something like that. Then you get these visitors showing up. And, and there's no hard, fast rule about what type of UFO sighting is going gonna, is gonna to cause a visit from the men in black. So that, to me, it, it's kind of asymmetrical. It's kind of lopsided. It happens when it happens. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. That, to me, seems that it's more terrestrial-based, more human-based, because it's an agency responding to something where they know and they know who the witnesses are. Sure. Right? I think that if you, if, if you are of the school of thought that they're non-human, then you'd have to ask, well, okay, so they obviously have supernatural abilities and they can materialize and appear whenever they want. Why are they choosing to harass some witnesses and not others? Yeah. I, and so, I and I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's, that's, that's like irrefutable proof that they're human. I'm just saying that when you, when you kind of take it like, what's step, all right, step one, human or not? Well, if you look at it like that, then logically you're more likely that they're human. And that these are just uh, these sightings. They're not assuming everybody's telling the truth. Sure. Um, these sightings kind of suggest that it is a response from a government agency or some type of earthly agency. Right. And and I agree with that. I I have you know personally questioned the existence of men in black because even though I say it, I think I may have encountered one. Why haven't I encountered one since then? you know right and especially like in your case and once again i i kind of said this earlier there could be multiple explanations at play here what like if you look at like dan Aykroyd's story right the phenomenon that he reports seems very otherworldly when he talks about his sighting of the men in black yeah this, this car appears out of nowhere. It's very old timey. It's very out of place. There's this mysterious figure that looks human, but is also kind of odd for being a human. And they're there and then they disappear and blah, blah, blah. But the network canceling his show two hours later. Well, Jesus, are the men in black in bed with the sci fi channel? How right. does that work? That right. seems like something that maybe the FBI could do. Or the government can do, but I don't know about aliens. I mean, unless there's, unless they have, you know, who? I mean, just think about that for a second, right? Because well, like, uh, like sci-fi puts out. There's tons of UFO shit on TV. There's a whole entire series about it called Ancient right. Aliens. You know, is, why is that the, why? Is that why the plug got pulled on your show, Dan Aykroyd? Because the fucking <laughs> aliens did it, not because you were producing shit, right? <laughs> no, it must be. It must be fucking you know beings from Alpha Centauri that fucking pulled the plug on your show because they're in bed with all the cable networks right like yeah think about that for a second right. so i think like what what Aykroyd's suggesting i don't think he's trying to contradict himself 
But if you really take a step back and look at it, he kind of is. Are they aliens? Or are, is it the government? Because if it's the government, you can understand how they could shut down a TV show. If they're aliens, that's like, what are you even? Okay. So maybe they have the aliens showed up at the president of the Sci Fi Channel's house and were like, cancel Dan Aykroyd's show? Or <laughs> what's the fucking explanation there? I don't even know. Like, let's let's hear it. Like, what, what is it? What does he think? I'm not asking you to fucking come up with something, but I mean, like, really? Like, how does that play out? So are, are the two things working in bed together? Is the the gov did the aliens say to their human counterparts, "You guys need to shut down this show. This is too dangerous. He's getting to the, he's getting too deep into things, right?" I don't I know. Mean, and you're right. There's so much alien content out there on cable. Why was this show canceled? Right. Why? I mean, what? it's not like we don't have other documents. 19 seasons of ancient aliens. Right. And stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, is it just that all of those other things out there, all of the media out there, all of them are wrong. All of them have gotten it wrong. What about it's the state, uh, of, state approved disinformation and what Ackroyd was doing was so dangerous. So punk rock, so off the cuff that it had to be silenced. So what was it that he was doing? As he said, I don't know, but you know what? <laughs> that would, that, that should the be show. the first thing he's talking about. Yeah. Get what did you, show. okay. So yeah, your show got shit canned. What did you talk about on it? Right. Like, because obviously there's something there, you know. And you might not know exactly what it is, but let's just run down the list. What was episode one about? What did you talk about episode two? Who'd you interview? What'd they say? You know. Right. What you have coming up planned? You know what? What? What were these concepts? You know, and then and then in that case, you know, okay, so you got people like uh, Dan Aykroyd had got a show canceled because again, maybe he just had it right on the money. He was a little too close to being right, um, you know, and he had a legit thing going on. So then what about people like Tanya Derenberger? Are we then saying that she's not, her experience didn't happen? Is is that the implication here? Because I have very good reason to believe that it did. Um, you know, are we saying that like, I didn't encounter the moth because th- th- these guys were chasing people that saw the Mothman. So you're trying to say, I didn't see the Mothman because you didn't come right. visit me and talk to me about it. Um, you know, when I have a show and I'm, I'm publicly now granted, I'm not Dan Aykroyd, but, or we're not the sci-fi channel, but we will gladly, um, do a show for the sci-fi channel if you guys want. Um, but you know, still, I mean, I have an audience, I got a platform, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing all this information. Am I wrong? Am I, am I off kilter? No, about Jeremiah Byron is a fucking CIA plant and I've been <gasps> saying this since goddamn day one. He's a men in black. <laughs> Jeremiah's like in Men in Black. Now hold on. Let me let, now let me explain that joke because that joke actually has a lot to do with this phenomenon. I, <laughs> as someone that's read a whole bunch, I'm more of a conspiracy guy, right? Like that's mm-hmm. kind of what I've read the most on. And if you've if you've read enough about conspiracies, then you know that something that the CIA does very regularly is insert operatives into organizations just to keep an eye on things, right? Now, sometimes it, it, it turns into something bigger where you have, like, you know, them infiltrating the Black Party, Black Panther Party or Occupy Wall Street to nudge these organizations to chaos and discredit them, right? Sometimes, or violence and, disc- you know, have them, whatever. Sometimes you have, like, the Charles Manson stuff with MK Ultra and all that shit. But you would think that in the paranormal community, or the you know the cryptozoology community and all the podcasts that we produce amongst all of us, all of our friends, right? All of this little loosely knit fucking organ, you know, cabal that we have, right? You would think that out of some somebody somewhere, and maybe it's not me and you, and maybe it's not Jeremiah, maybe it's not Kinsey or fucking Aaron D's or anything, but somewhere on some level, there's somebody that's fucking on retainer with the fucking government. You think so? Oh yeah. And you think it's probably Jeremiah? I I just get cop vibes from him, but it's because <laughs> he's very. That's because he's got his shit together. I mean, like, he's too to well organized. It's strictly an interview <laughs> podcast, so I mean that couldn't make sense. He's gathering these stories to figure out who right. needs to silence and who he, has anybody that's been on a show ever died. Should oh, be? I don't think it's about silencing. I think it's about just getting people to spill their guts. They're interrogations. They're not interviews. I think that's all it is. I think he's just he's just picking people's brains. And then if anybody gets it right or gets too close to the mark, then they get visited in the middle of the night by somebody. But um, every fucking time Pat hears Jeremiah talk, he's instantly messages me. This guy's fucking CIA. <laughs> every time. 
<laughs> and I, I only half believe that. I don't. Jeremiah, let it... No, Jeremiah's for it though. Like he's into this. He oh no, no, it. me, yeah, me and him, me and him go back and forth about it on Instagram all the time. But like, I'm not trying to just besmirch the guy's name. If if you're listening to this show for, for and you're somebody that he contacts to do an interview with, 100 percent just go on the show. I'm yeah. not trying to say like don't do it. You know, I know that's the reason he's never had me on his show is because he fucking... Is that, that what the be. membership cards are? Do you think he's like... Oh, there's RFID people? trackers in those fucking things. I swear <laughs> to God. I swear to God. <laughs> what? Oh, you want me to put this thing in my wallet, Jeremiah Byron, and carry it with me wherever the fuck I go? All right, bro. Okay. Sure. Let me just give you my Apple password, too, while I'm fucking at it. Uh, you know? <laughs> no, he's a, good, he's a good dude. He's I do. Great. I, do. No, he's... I love him. I admire his... I admire the guy and listen to the interview we do with him. You could hear the admiration in my voice when I'm talking to the guy. 100% no, he's no wonderful, yeah. Yes, but I he's CIA. I mean, 100%. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> he's a cop. It's he's Jeremiah. a fucking cop. You know, but he's living proof that not all cops are bastards. I will say that, too. He's a very good guy. Maybe the secret agent is me. I. You know what? That would That would explain a couple different things. It's not me, but maybe it is. I mean, you got to keep an open mind. Don't think it can't be a girl. <laughs> yeah, don't tr- don't trust. Don't be sexist. You know? Random. Don't trust strangers on the internet, you guys. I, I, it could be me. You would yeah. be more effective because men would drop their defenses around you, and people would be willing to talk to you a lot easier. Women in general, I think, are um, you know, I I hate gender roles, but I mean, I think they're usually considered easier to talk to. So, yeah, oh, they have value think, in the field, one hundred percent. You know, I, I think it, I think it would make sense for it to be. Well, actually, Nick Redfern. Um, you know, who's another big person within this community. Um, he's written three books about the men in black. One of them is about women in black. Yeah, now I think it's you. I wish you hadn't <laughs> said that because you fucked up our whole dynamic now. Never trust me ever again. I mean, I will because I'm <laughs> fucking damaged well, like that. Yeah, it's fine. No, I mean, it just doesn't. <laughs> I, if you think that it means that I'm going to be... I, I, have, I have such bad fucking like boundary issues oh same it's fine <laughs> it doesn't you can be the worst person in the world for me yeah you know. leave that shit out yeah but uh yeah you know it is what it is but anyway um yeah i mean it, it very well could be i mean i just think that they would obviously have to adjust with the times and that's not the only there are modern day men in black encounters um nothing as notable that i that i thought was as notable or as sexy as the ones that i shared you know um but they do still happen. But then why don't they happen to everybody? And, you know, well, can I get the in, line. Can I get into some of my pre-1940s? Because I, I, I took the time yes. to write this shit up. I know you're not going to want to tolerate it, but just bear with me. I, now, listen, Pat, you, you have a voice, too. You're allowed to use it. <laughs> Thank you. So, yes, one of, the, one of the things talked about in the Complete Secret Cipher, the UFO Knots by Alan Greenfield, uh, you correctly called it. I am getting this information from the fucking book is well okay first of all w- one thing that i talked about which ties into last week's episode about the mer people is that um it talks about uh the theory of the they're the onis o a n n e s which are supposed to be beings that came down from heaven and that lived in the persian gulf they were aquatic human hybrids they lived in the persian gulf and would come out of the water during the day to teach mankind arts and sciences and then would return to the water at night and this is like ancient mesopotamia so early 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 examples of mer people that were aliens that lived in the water and came out and fucking share their knowledge with mankind so Which is i know far off from some of the reports that we get especially with the uap disclosure uh, most of those reports are coming from the navy so eh, you know just to mention that Right. Well, that was something that I came across online was the important distinction that we've seen the Navy's files. The Navy's the one releasing all this information, but not necessarily the Air Force. Although that's that's always kind of a weird, like if you watch Top Gun, that's about the Navy. They're Navy pilots because they launch off of aircraft carriers. Yeah. But then, or they launch off of aircraft carriers that are in the sea. So that's considered Navy. Well, the, and the Air Force, they're the ones that um, run the, I mean, that's where you get Project Blue Book. And, you know, that's where they study that stuff. So they can't really disclose all of it because they're the ones investigating it. And you would know because you're a fucking spook. I might be. <laughs> you learned all this in Quantico, didn't you? Maybe. But, <laughs> but going back to uh, some of the other stuff. So there's like, 
you know, I guess when you start looking at the men in black phenomenon, there's people try to uh, retrofit it into stuff that's existed before. Okay. And the two examples that I wanted to talk about is one uh, biblical stories, right? Because what's interesting is that you have a lot of, and this is, this is stuff that's gaining traction now, but there's a lot of uh, recently, there's been a lot of emphasis on biblically accurate angels, right? Which are these crazy multi-winged, multi-eyed human animal hybrid beings that are super crazy looking right yeah i think mothman's one and that's that's how these beings are described in the bible but then you have these other encounters with angels where they're completely human and they pass for human right you have like the uh the story of like sodom and gomorrah where the angels come to lot who was living in sodom and they were so they were human, but they were kind of odd looking. And the people in town all came to Lot's house because they wanted to fuck these. They call them angels, right? But basically, they were kind of like I don't, I don't want to say like men in black, but they were human human beings that were otherworldly, but they were in human human form more than when you look at like how the seraphim, the cherubim, are described in the Bible, which are six wings and fucking a million eyes and all this shit right so what's the distinction between some angels which are completely like abominations of fucking matter and then these other ones that are more human right and then in uh alistair crowley he wrote uh one of the books that he wrote was called the book of law and supposedly this book was written when he was on his honeymoon and uh he was he was on his honeymoon in uh cairo egypt and this being, who we call the Awas, A I W A S S, who seemed to be a tall, dark man in his 30s, well knit, active and strong, with the face of a savage king, and eyes veiled lest their gaze should destroy what they saw. And he, there's a picture that he drew of this creature. So, what happened was this being would come to him every day at noon and transcribe and, and give him this, like, kind of like, talk to him and give him this book that he would write down and that's what turned into his book of law right which you can buy on amazon for like fucking five bucks and i haven't read it yet so i can't tell you what it's about but my point is is that all this information was related to him by this being this human being that would or humanoid being that would come to him and uh not only so it's described as being dark but also uh the picture that he drew has um I, I would you would say like the Asian facial features kind of it looks kind of like a gray, uh, but a, a very humanoid gray, not like the huge bulging black eyes, but like still oddly shaped eyes, which is something that's attributed to a lot of the men in black and was even in the, the YouTube post that I read earlier. OK, that's kind of like a recurring theme sometimes is that they have Asian like eyes. Um, and that's kind of interesting because you have yeah being visited by dark humanoid beings i mean even has connections as far back as the shadow people right that people feel like you know they experience sometimes and during sleep paralysis like i don't know how much we want to connect the dots with this stuff but there's i feel like there's enough metaphysical and kind of like you could almost make an argument for them being magical and not necessarily alien like they're not necessarily something that's coming here from another planet like they didn't fly here on a craft from another moon or some shit they're not from nibiru you know like these could be entities that kind of come through to our reality and try to take on the visage of whatever they feel is appropriate at the time. And what's interesting is that that can change over the years, depending on where we're at culturally, number one. But number two, that they are kind of menacing, right? Like when they, when w- w- their experience with Crowley was like, okay, they're imparting information, that was kind of positive. And when they visit uh, Lot and Sodom, it's to kind of warn him to get the fuck out of town before God, using air quotes, destroys the city of Sodom, so- cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, presumably to kill off the giants. But um, 
when you look at them in modern context, I mean, they're canceling Dan Aykroyd's TV show. They're threatening witnesses. They're not exactly a positive thing, right? And it's kind of interesting that, like, they have all this power, but yet to, like, do this stuff, to, like, kind of come into our reality and to threaten us, but they're still not necessarily harming us. Like, that, that story that you told about the kidnapping, it's very, like, unique. You know what I mean? They're not, they're, they're usually just talking shit. The, the fact that they physically try to restrain someone and capture them and take them somewhere else, I mean, maybe that happens more than we know of, and it's just a disappearance. And we don't know that the men in black were involved. Right. right? Which is a terrifying thought. But it's just, it's like, you know, it, it kind of goes back to, like, when we talk about the abduction phenomenon. And, like, you know, it's interesting that, like, the, 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 the greys or these aliens can come and they can shut us down and they can do these experiments. But they're not wiping us out, you know. It seems like there is some fear. There was some, you know, anytime you hear a, a, a conspiracy theory that has to do with, like, them making a pact with the government. Well, why would they even need to ask permission, right, if they're that powerful, Maybe they're not. Maybe there's rules here that we don't quite fully grasp that the men in black are governed by. You know what I mean? They're intimidating and they're scary, but they're not all powerful. You know what I mean? Well, and sometimes, I mean, you know, people threaten people. You know, sometimes the threat is enough, you know, and and they assume it's enough. Or, you know, maybe there are a lot more men in black sightings than, than, than we know about, and they did their job effectively. Or like you said, maybe they are kidnapping people and we don't know because it's not like they're going to come out and be like hey brother been black and we kidnap people you know right um they're not going to know those disappearances it. yeah percentage of that is us well <laughs> me and tobias talked about one time how just kind of you know just talking about how you get these stories sent into you and whenever you try to kind of pry for more information you might get a random email or message or something and you'll get these random encounters these random stories people have and when you try to respond and you get more out of them they just ghost and they're gone and is that because they were visited by the men in black and the men in black are like no you can't share this I, or maybe it's just because they're they're lying and i you know who knows why it's just like <clears throat> with hell you're <laughs> they bring it up the whole terry wrist situation um who you know who was that guy maybe he ended up encountering them in black and they threatened him and that's why he fucking skipped town you know maybe people are scared away by these things and maybe it is effective and that's why not everybody comes out and talks about it um i i don't i you know i don't know i mean you know when you talk about you know of course we already know my stance on the whole magic and, and religion thing and i'm you know it's just not my it's not my bag but um what do you mean it's not I mean, I know you're not like religious, but like you don't think magic is real. Uh, I, n I mean, <sighs> yes and no. I mean, I think that there's a science to some of the magic, but I don't think that there's um, like to the degree that like Crowley believed in magic. Absolutely not. That guy was terrible. Um, he was basically a cult leader, and <laughs> I'm not a big fan. But you know, it, I can't completely write off and say that all every single thing that he shared was incorrect there might be some truth to some of it i don't think that there is like you were saying these people aren't traveling from a distant planet I, I disagree with that i think that the universe is big enough for all of us and i think that they probably do come from somewhere they just travel differently which is what makes them ultimately interdimensional i think that's probably what they are is interdimensional but i think there is still science to it i don't think it's because they are spiritual because i don't believe in, in spirituality like that um you know it's a weird I, I believe in like the law of attraction because it's it's been tried and, and true and tested you know against science and it is a very real thing that happens um you know but i don't know if that's just because it's a placebo for your mind to work harder towards the things that you want or what but it it is it is real um but i don't believe you know in, in magic the way that a lot of people believe in magic i guess so i don't know anyway that's a whole conversation for a whole nother day um you know i, I don't think that there's I think there could be ancient ties to these beings. That's assuming that they aren't human. I don't personally think that there is a government body 
that is particularly just like in the men in black movies i don't think there's a government body that is cut out to have humans go from place to place to silence people i think that you can be visited by government officials and they are interested in your stories we've actually seen that happen again let's reference project blue book (laughs) you know we know that they investigate this stuff um but i don't think that they're silencing anybody um, I know when Woody Derenberger was visited by the the officials from Wright Pat Air Force Base, they didn't tell him not to talk about it. They just asked him questions. They just said, hey, we believe you. We just want to know what you know. Um, you know, and so <clears throat> we see that a lot. Um, but if people are being visited by these creatures, I mean, you'd have to think, I mean, what's the motive? Why would they want us to not talk about it? What are they hiding? I don't know. There's a lot to it. Um, but there are some really credible stories that I just can't write off. I'm not saying that I don't believe in the men in black, but I can't fully endorse that I do quite yet. I think, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure that they're native from a different planet. Um, I think if you want my, uh, my armchair, uh, explanation of all this, I think that, um, it's two things. I think there's a percentage of them that are government boogeymen that they could be investigating a, a, a phenomenon uh, as well, an incursion in our reality from an outside source. And uh, they find witnesses that maybe saw too much or uh, have physical evidence and they will intercede and try to silence those people and collect the evidence that they have because they're trying to figure it out themselves. Right. Right. So, uh, not necessarily the men in black, like the movie where they're in cahoots with all these different aliens, but definitely the men in black, like, you know, we're talking about the OSS or, or, you know, the X-Files where they're one step behind this phenomenon as well, trying to figure it out. And if you look at where we're at right now with disclosure, you know, either we're being, uh, treated to a whole slew of carefully fucking you know, articulated disinformation, or we're starting to find out the government really wasn't running the fucking show like we thought they were, right? That we thought that the government knew a whole bunch and was hiding a whole bunch, and now we're finding out all they were hiding is how little they fucking knew, you know? Yeah. If any of that stuff's to be believed, and it's questionable, you should question everything. Sure. That's part about being a thinking human being, you know? Yeah. Rhetoric. So, Um, but I think that there's a part of it that could be incursions from other intelligences in 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 our reality and uh you know i don't necessarily think that it's magic in the ceremonial sense but i think it's magic in the same way that a technology greater than our own seems like magic if you went back in time yes. with a fucking iphone yes and a lighter i, <laughs> I mean you go that. far enough yeah. back and a big lighter the size of your very clit would be seen as fucking <laughs> magical to to some civilizations if you go back far enough if you go back 300 fucking a uh, hundred years 150 years yeah you know what i mean a, oh, a yeah. big lighter would seem like fucking you were a fireball throwing wizard you know so um that's my that's my hot take on it is that you know i think some of these are just the government trying to figure out the fuck's going on and they're wearing black suits because it was the 1950s and men wore suits to go to the grocery store while well, they wouldn't go to the grocery store that's what they had women for but you know what i mean uh men wore suits everywhere so having a guy in a black suit a good g-man poke asking questions after a ufo sighting uh it was probably a little unnerving and maybe they made it that way intentionally but wasn't necessarily mystical or, or otherworldly or paranormal and um then i think there's stuff where no those those are that's a that's a monster coming through to our reality <laughs> trying to figure out how to blend in or something and doing a piss poor job <laughs> just at it. bad at it I, I yeah you know i'll be honest I, that's kind of wholesome i find that really wholesome that like they don't know how to do things like use this pork <laughs> You know, right. I don't. I think it's kind of adorable, um, but I, that's how you know if it's a men in black. If, if they don't, if they don't know what the fuck they're doing at all. Um, just you know, some people reported like, you know, silly things. Somebody reported uh trying to give one a handshake, and it was very confused by the handshake, and it, it had no idea what to do with that. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, so so try to shake everybody's hand, and um, you know, also like the one guy's tail with his eye doctor. Ask for their credentials and uh, see what happens there. 
Um, but you know, yeah, I, I don't, I just haven't quite made up my mind yet. I mean, like I said, I, I hear these stories, um, like the, like the Connie Carpenter case. I think she was legitimately traumatized. And, um, again, could it have just been two separate incidences where she saw the Mothman's face and it fucked with her. And then she also, somebody tried to kidnap her sure absolutely um the the mystery photographers i find really interesting as well but you know the mystery photographers seem to have a couple i mean there's an easy explanation for that i mean but people say and that's kind of where they get the you know in the men in black movie they have like the memory eraser and it's like a big mm-hmm. flash that's what people say they're, they're getting their picture by taking by these people's like um it's a really weird extra bright light that like burns your eyeballs out but then again like you ever stood in front of a camera with a flash went off i mean it's bright and it sucks for a minute you know <laughs> it's just <laughs> you ever walk outside and it's really bright out there and your eyeballs are like ah um you know i don't see much of a difference um i think that you know it does make sense for them to be like journalists stopping by to take a picture of you know scenes of the events that are happening at the time i mean you know i think that a lot of them i agree with keel a lot of them could be misidentified again we know that because keel was was misidentified as one right and like aliens with cameras like fucking what <laughs> right but like, well, why do they have a camera like that there there's so many things where like the it, it just it doesn't make sense it, one guy said he came home and the, one of them was inside of his house and he kind of saw it and it was dark in the house and um it took a picture of him and the flash went off and then he couldn't see and it d- disappeared um, but nothing was stolen. But then again, I mean, if you're just a robber breaking into a house and like you don't have a gun, it's just creative robbing, right? Just get a fucking camera with flash and, you know, flash your eyeballs out and run away. I mean. And, but why would an alien, but think about it like this. Why would the alien need to do that? Why would the alien need to break into his house when he wasn't home and look around and then make a hasty getaway when it can just fucking zip in and out of reality? If it wanted to catch the guy at home, it would have caught the guy at home. And when he came home, he would have fucking popped away. Why did he need to cover his tracks? Why did he need to throw down the proverbial smoke bomb? Yeah. Only a human would need to do that. Right? right. So you're talking about human behavior here. Now, the flash temporarily blinding him so the other guy can get away. Maybe that wasn't a camera. Maybe it was a prop that had a, a flashbang component to it. Maybe there's some fucking spy James Bond technology at foot here. Who knows? But that sounds terrestrial to me. Okay. Yeah, there's there. I think there's there's when you when you look at enough of these stories, you can kind of sort through like eh, maybe that was actually the government poking around because of something. But once again, then you got to form the narrative in your head of like what kind of what's because we don't even know what the game is yet. We don't have confirmation of what's officially happening. So it's like we're seeing symptoms of things, not to borrow a phrase from Hellier, but, <laughs> but uh, we're seeing symptoms of things and trying to like figure out what the disease is, figure out what the cause is, right? What could be going on that has these two forces actively acting independently of one another, or are they in cahoots together, right? Is there some kind of joint outside otherworldly intelligence government thing going on here where some of the men in black are human and some of them are alien and they're going out in the field and doing this shit, you know? Does or that do sound? neither of them exist at all? And all these people are just lying? I don't believe that. I don't believe that either. Yeah. <laughs> no. You know, I'm not one to believe that. Uh, maybe some people were, but not all of them. I Like I said, I just some of them. You know, that's another thing. Um, I, I was in a discussion with somebody on social media earlier this week about, um, you know, just some big theories about how some of the stuff works and, and you know, eyewitness accounts as um as as much as as we know that that humans aren't great at recanting every single detail um nothing nothing will make you believe if you haven't experienced the real thing i highly encourage you to sit down with somebody who has had their entire life altered by one of these experiences and then at the end of it walk away saying i don't believe them because you can't and i feel like that is especially the case with some of these ufo stories um i like the i i like the bender story um because i feel like you know the guy finally found his calling and then just fucking up and quit and when you backtrack on his whole life i mean it seemed like you know he just like how we grew up weird kids like in weird shit and now we do stuff like this you know i would never i can't imagine ever quitting 
There's no force on this planet that would make me quit, except if I genuinely felt like my life was in danger. And then I'd, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably bitch out, um, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> just to be honest, I probably would, um, you know, so, you know, and I think that that's a very similar situation, um, I guess, unless maybe he ended up, you know, developing some type of mental illness later in life, but nothing really points to that. It all points to the fact that he quit out of fear because he genuinely thought that these beings were coming after him and following him and ready to attack him if he continued his work. And um, I just think that that's the most powerful piece of evidence we have right now. There's allegedly pictures, but I mean, gosh, you know, people dress up in black suits. Right. Especially, yeah, there's there's lots of videos on YouTube where it's like, oh, it's just right. men in black caught on security camera. It's like, or it's a guy in fucking a suit. Some sunglasses. guys in know. a suit, right. Maybe they were dressing like the men in black that day. I mean, people right. do that. I, I did that. People do that, you know. Black um, suits are very, if you don't know it's a where you wear a black suit, you're going to a court case, you're going to a funeral, you're going to a wedding. You know what I mean? It's kind of like your go to. Dressing like a lot, blues, especially for like white people. Like, I not, that's not being yeah, racist. That's I think true. it's like, boring white people just wear black suits right you know um and they're wearing glasses i mean and maybe they wear the glasses because underneath them they have glowing crazy eyes and no eyebrows and fucked up facial features or maybe they're just wearing sunglasses because they're standing around out fucking side and it's bright i'm from chicago that look is just called dressing like the blues brothers you know <laughs> it's, it's yeah, fucking... <laughs> right i mean people do starring that. dan Aykroyd. oh it's all coming fucking full, full circle makes sense now huh all right <laughs> you know but yeah you know again i can't I, I can't give a solid opinion i i would like just like i'd like to believe that nessie's a plesiosaur i'd like to believe that the men in black exist and that all these stories are real but i can't tell you professionally that they are or that they do i would i would ask our listeners that if you come across any modern day men in black encounters send them our way because i would like to see where this is at now um because everything everything that we came across seems kind of dated it seems like something that's not really happening anymore which well nick read you know, three books he's got three books on it yeah that he wrote now but like you know how many what how many cases did we talk about today that were pre-2005 none you know what i mean everything we talked about was was earlier you know it was at least was 17 years old if not more you know, the Dan Aykroyd thing was kind of the most recent one, and that was even fucking questionable because you're like, what are you talking about, Dan? What are you trying to say? Like, your shit just didn't get canceled? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I guess it was Aliens or your show sucked. I don't know. I don't want to – not that I want to talk shit about Dan Aykroyd. I've met him a bunch. He's actually a really nice guy. But, like, you know, like I said, I made my point about that story earlier. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think men in, is Men in Black not a thing? Did not happen as much? is you know mobile phones did that how did that change the game you know how did that change for if you're an outside intelligence trying to fucking intimidate people but now everyone's got a po cell phone in their pocket like does that change the way you conduct yourself does that change why it feels like abductions aren't a thing anymore either and i know i've talked about that on this show it feels like abductions were huge in the 80s and 90s and now they've kind of dropped off are people not being abducted as much did they accomplish whatever their goals were is is the is the program moved on to stage four which doesn't include abductions now it includes something else are the men in black no longer at play you know these these aspects of the phenomenon that are there and then kind of not so much you know i don't know i uh I, I disagree with some of those things but i can understand why you're skeptical um you know again lots of reading material with this stuff and, and that's the thing about it is like you can't and that's another i didn't even mention that you can't just google men in black like you can't just do that and and hope for the best right there's too many other distractors like will smith and right. tommy lee jones <laughs> And, you know, but in, and I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, I, I kind of had a theory about that for a while because they did go on and make a movie. You know, knowing what you know after, because that's how I was introduced to the Men in Black. Because, as you guys all know, I was an avid Will Smith fan. <laughs> and <laughs> until he smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. But, no, you know, that's how I knew about it was because Men in Black was a big deal when it came out. And, um, you know, they made fucking happy meal toys with the men in black stuff and 
you know, they made it seem so cool, but I didn't know at that time that that was a real thing. I didn't know that was a real phenomenon because I was too young to be into that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so it took a long time. Is it because they were trying to kind of um, normalize these guys or, or, or because they wanted some type of media footprint? So that way, if you did, I mean, the internet was really just becoming a thing at that point in time, because if you did search it on the internet, it would come up with the movie because that's what you'll get if you google men in black that's what comes up if you type it into youtube that's what comes up um that is that is interesting like for some reason dan Aykroyd's show was gonna blow up was was gonna fucking blow the lid off more stuff than straight up calling a hollywood blockbuster men in black yeah like the the interest that that would create just like accidentally like tangently right because like people are gonna like think about it this movie's that big People are going to look in, and it was based on a comic book too. Yeah. Um. It, so people are going to look into it, right? They're gonna, they're gonna. Don't you think that like something like that would actually bring more people to the phenomenon? And yet it was allowed to happen. Why was it allowed to happen? Well, is it allowed to happen because if you look into the phenomenon, you find out that the Men in Black are some fearsome entity that you know unexplained and they should be feared and all this other stuff maybe that's because they thought it would help perpetuate their rep or is the, is when the men in black movie started to take off is that when we saw the sightings of them decrease because they realized the jig is up we need to find another avenue for doing this shit or because they were trying to i mean it's just kind of like when i tell you i'm a men in black right and then i go because i'm admitting that i'm a men in black you're not going to believe that i am one but really i am you know it's kind of the same thing so because we put it out there publicly that this exists kind of mocking the audience if we acknowledge it then that means you, you need don't to quit that suggesting that you work for the fucking government because i'm gonna get a highlighter and start to believe this shit <laughs> i don't really go- i don't make enough money to, to work for the government that's the fucking yeah. cover i don't know what's in your fucking bank account that's I don't, true you know what i mean like a couple million just in case i need to cut i could put on a time. t-shirt with cat hair on it when people are around and then fucking <laughs> <laughs> and then you know try to do whatever in my off time like... that makes sense no you know it's uh i don't work for the government but oh, for... yeah, okay. but that's what i'm saying right so maybe that's what the introduction maybe they put it out there because because here's another thing about like the men in black movie um they put it out there because they wanted to make them appear friendly so that way if you did have a visit from the men in black the actual men in black you wouldn't think that they were threatening to go and tell people you'd think that they were trying to help you and then you'd relay their story and they'd go listen maybe they thought that being intimidating was not working for people scaring the shit out of people wasn't working so they're like just don't talk to anybody about this we'll help you out if you play mr nice cop then there people are more willing to work with you also when the third movie came out there was a viral marketing that took place where there was a billboard that actually had a phone number for people to call. And if you called that phone number, it was encouraged for you to share your stories of, of alien activity. Yeah. I, so if you look at what the CIA has tried to accomplish in the past with disinformation campaigns, it's exactly this, right? It's not necessarily to convince you from story a to story B. It's just to make you so fucking confused that you don't know what's real anymore. Right. It's to make you so fucking your head. So turned like you, you start out believing wholeheartedly, this is what's going on. And if the disinformation campaign is worth its salt by the end of it, you're not going to think, Oh, this untrue thing is what's going on. You're just not going to know in general. And maybe that was the whole thing of the men in black was like right you know what we're just gonna spin it around so that people are because you could say the same thing about jfk if jfk was really fucking killed by members of our government or or the mafia or whatever right and they went through these great lengths to silence all those witnesses then why the fuck are they making movies and tv shows and 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 three-part specials about the jfk assassination constantly right why it's it's got to be the worst kept secret at this point right unless maybe they make you they make you want to be fucking afraid and it's a kind of like hey look at what we did in the past and we basically got away with it you know don't fuck with us barack obama we'll have you assassinated or, or you better do this or if we can kill kennedy who can't we get to you know and everyone will just look the other way so i i don't know that's the thing about conspiracies and, and disinformation is that once that once that thing opens up it gets real fucking messy yeah you know 
Yeah. It, it sends it, your brain into a loop. And then, like you said, you get confused and you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't. This is exhausting. <laughs> I'm going to go watch. And that's it. And then you stop giving a shit. <laughs> yeah. And anything you thought you knew, you question now and you don't fucking care and you go back to watching Wheel of Fortune. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly i mean that's just kind of the way it is so you know i don't know just like i said very interesting things to note about the men in black but what i was getting into before we went on the tangent about the movies um you know is is that there are good books on it um read the flying saucers and the three men um read gray barkers they knew too much um read nick redfern's three he's got i believe three of them three men in black books just Nick Redfern's such a big name. Just Google the guy. You'll fucking find him. It's easy. Um, you know, there's there there is good reading material on it. Not necessarily stuff that you'll just find openly if, if you Google. You really got to kind of dig on some of these topics. Um, and, and I think that the Men in Black is definitely one of them. Um, but there is more source material out there. Google some of these stories that we kind of talked about because they, you know, aside from just the Men in Black uh, stuff, I mean, they were really interesting. Um, you know, of course the the original the tacoma the uh what is it the mari island incident whole whole rabbit hole there whole rabbit hole with albert bender and his and his saga of course the mothman you know all very notable stuff um so yeah i don't know i think that's all we got right you got anything else i got nothing okay well then on that note guys we'll see you back here next wednesday